Okay guys, today, today we're gonna talk about designing and building your own cold smoker. So it's August in Chicago, it's hot, it's humid, it's a disgusting day outside, it just finished raining. Now is the time to prepare for this winter to make sure that you guys have a cold smoker available when you start drying and curing the meats that you're gonna be doing uh, over the fall and the winter. So a couple things we wanna talk about when we're talking about the design of a cold smoker. Number one is the capacity. How much capacity are you really gonna need for the year to put meat and sausage through your cold smoker? The one that I built this year is a little bit bigger than it probably should be. It's about three times the size of my old cold smoker, but I put a lot of meat through the cold smoker. And so for me, the capacity was pretty important. The second thing is the storage. Where are you gonna put this thing? I built it and I'll be honest with you guys, the wife ain't so happy with me right now. But the reality is I store it outside, I store it on the side of the house. Nobody sees it except for my neighbor and quite honestly, I don't really care. But at the same time, if you're gonna build a cold smoker, make sure you have a place to put it, make sure that it's not enormous unless you absolutely need something that's that big and make sure that the capacity and the storage uh, is something that you can actually work with. And the third thing that we always want to talk about or, or understand is the region of the country where you're in. So if you're in a cold climate like I am here in Chicago, my design is going to be different than if I'm in a warmer climate, a sunbelt climate, uh, like for instance, Arizona. Nighttime temperatures are going to play a big time factor in the operation of your cold smoker. And so you really want to be smoking meats at, let's say, 32 to... 45 degrees external temperature. If your region doesn't get that cold, you may have to do things a little bit differently. Your recipes may have to have to be a little bit different. I personally like doing everything naturally with sea salts and salt. I don't like adding nitrates and nitrites to my meats and sausages. So for me, smoking at 32 degrees or lower sometimes is critically important to the meat safety so nobody gets sick and nobody's dying from eating this this sausage and the pork loins and the meats that i make and number four you really got to think about the cost of the cold smoker now unfortunately i built mine during covid and with all the material shortages i paid through the wazoo for all the material in particular, the cedar and the steel. I'm in it for $650 just in material costs. That doesn't include any labor costs. 650 bucks is a pretty steep price to pay for a cold smoker, considering that for just a little bit more, or if I would account for my labor costs on top of that, I can get a really nice hot smoker. Now, material prices are coming down and have come down. And I tried to build this cold smoker so it's gonna last me at least 10 years. So I've probably invested a little bit more money into it than most people would. But for me, this was the right design. It was the right smoker for what I need it for at this point in time. Down the road, maybe I'll change it. There are commercially available cold smokers that you can buy and install in your home. And they're fantastic, they're pricey, but they work wonderful. I personally don't like cold smoking with pellets, with chips, with other alternative products. I wanna be able to light a fire and use real smoke coming out of, a, or rather into a cold smoker. I think the quality of the meat that you get, the end product is much better than if you're using a pellet smoker or you're using chips. That's just my personal opinion. Some people may disagree with me, but in my opinion, using real wood, apple wood, uh, peach, cherry wood, even oak sometimes, uh, is a much better end product than using chips and pellets. So enough of that. Let's start talking about the design of the actual system, and then we'll talk a little Little bit about building it. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about building my cold smoker because people who do cold smoking are typically very handy people. You guys could use any method of building this. You could weld it all up yourself. You could use wood like I did. You could even use a cardboard box. I don't recommend it. It's good for maybe one or two smokes, but if you're in a pinch and you want to try this hobby before you actually get uh, 
spend a ton of money on it, then yeah, go ahead, use a cardboard box, smoke once or twice, see if it works for you. If it does, great. If it doesn't, no big deal. So, all right, guys, here we go. Okay, guys, so what is this diagram? This diagram essentially is me trying to explain velocity and pressure on your new cold smoker for the design of your cold smoker. And essentially this is based on a principle called Bernoulli's principle. And Bernoulli's principle applies to fluid and gas. And all it talks about is how the diameter of pipe that's being uh, used is going to create higher velocities in smaller pipe with lower pressure and lower velocities with higher pressure in larger pipes and how the connection of these pipes will actually keep fluids and gases moving through the system. And so really, why is all this important? And it's important for really two reasons, oxygen and draft. If your fire isn't getting enough oxygen, it's due to a poor draft. So it's very important that this whole system works properly so you get enough vacuum coming through here or enough pressure getting through here to make sure that you're pulling fresh oxygen into your fire. And so if you look at this, the, the velocity essentially is the speed of the smoke coming into the cold smoker. And it's very high speed coming right off of the fire because you're going through a smaller four inch aluminum duct into a much larger chamber. So the smoke is gonna slow down here, but you're gonna create more pressure. And that pressure, that smoke has to escape somewhere and it escapes through a smaller opening. However you design your opening is gonna determine the high velocity portion of the top. So if I were just to take the top of my, my smoke chamber off, I wouldn't have high velocity and I wouldn't get a proper draft here. So I have to have some sort of constriction at the top to allow this gas to escape so I can create the velocity that I need to be able to essentially pull the new smoke into, into the cold chamber. Now, what I was talking about earlier with the region that you're from, if you're in a warmer region, you're gonna need a longer four inch pipe here, a four inch aluminum pipe to allow that smoke to travel a longer distance and to cool more. Because if your smoke is entering into this chamber above 55, 60 degrees, it's gonna, it's gonna cause spoilage on your meat. So you always want this smoke to be as absolutely as cold as possible. Ideally, it should be the same as or lower than, well, I don't think it could be lower than, but the same as the outdoor air temperature to a degree, right? We can't, obviously I can't make my smoke enter into the chamber at 22 degrees Fahrenheit, but I want it to be as cold as possible entering the smoke chamber because I don't want my meat to heat up and then cause spoilage bacteria to start growing in the meat. So a longer uh, uh, four inch aluminum duct here, which I would recommend six feet or potentially even eight feet, a longer four inch aluminum duct here is still gonna create plenty of velocity to get into your smoke chamber and then you're gonna need some sort of a, possibly maybe a chimney of some sort, something to actually create the rest of the velocity to, to draft, to pull that smoke through. Okay guys, so after that little discussion on theory, I wanted to kind of show you guys how I came up with the design of my cold smoker. And as you can see here, essentially what I did is I, I bought a bigger firebox. I, I contemplated making this myself, but the, the reality is it's just way cheaper and faster to buy a little, uh, a little box, which I'll leave a, a link in the description to that uh, in the video. Uh, a prefabricated firebox for a smoker and then you can see here, this is the four inch aluminum duct uh, that I installed 
to carry the smoke from the firebox to the smoking chamber. And my duct pipe is four feet long. If you're in a warmer climate, you can use a longer pipe, which will allow that smoke time to cool. Now, something that I, I got a lot of complaints on my videos a long time ago asking me why I never installed a filter on my uh, cold smoker. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I really didn't know that there was a such, uh, such a device or, or a thing as a filter for a cold smoker. But after doing some research on it, it is 100% correct. And there's multiple benefits to installing a filter on your cold smoker, which I'll show you more um, detail later. And I'm also probably gonna do a separate uh, video on this because I think it's very, very important and it significantly improves the flavor of your naturally smoked meat. So more on that later. And then there's some design, actual true design guidelines that is occurring up here. By code, if you are building a chimney and a firebox, the minimum angle you can use for the firebox is 45 degrees. Now, you could do more than 45 degrees, you could do 60 to achieve a higher pitch, because what that does is it, it allows that smoke to gradually accumulate here at the top and then push it out. I've seen some guys do flat roofs where maybe they pitch it from a side view, they're gonna pitch it at an angle like this and then the smoke will travel up and then come out like this. And that works That works just as well as this. I just find this to be more aesthetically pleasing and then it also gives me an option of stacking more meat up in the gable end of the, of the uh, uh, smoke box. So hot smoke is created here, begins to travel along a four foot aluminum, four to eight foot aluminum duct. And of course, you guys have all heard me say this before, only aluminum, no galvanized, because the temperature of the smoke coming out here is well over two, 300 degrees. And I don't want any potential for the galvanization on those pipes to the zinc to leach out into my smoke and then contaminate my meat and make everybody sick. So I only use aluminum duct I did find a four foot piece of aluminum duct at Menards, which is our local big box uh, retailer over here. A four foot section of aluminum duct, which by the time when the temperature is between 32 degrees, let's say closer to 32 rather than 55, by the time the exterior temperature when it's 32, it reaches to this point here. The smoke is actually pretty cool. It comes in around 40 degrees, 45 degrees. And so then that smoke will eventually work its way around the meat, flavor the meat, preserve the meat, and then work its way out. And this is, this is where we're pinching to create the velocity. This is where we open it up and it creates pressure. And then we pinch it again at the top to create the velocity for that smoke to bellow out quickly, which then creates the draft. Now, remember, you have cold air coming in here the oxygen, right? Whoa, coming in here, O2. It's coming in through the firebox over there. It's getting pulled into the fire, obviously, creating the clean combustion, and then getting pulled up and through, and then out through the top of the, of the uh, chimney here. And you'll see in my design, I, I ended up putting adjustable uh, vents up top so I can control the amount of draft that this is creating. Now, even with an adjustable vent, there's so many gaps in the rest of this because it's not a tight construction uh, that I'm still having a hard time, not a hard time, but I, I have to control the oxygen from here and from there to create a, a slower, cleaner burning fire. So. I pretty much damper this down all the way and damper this down a significant amount and I'm still getting a, a, a relatively good airflow. So remember 45 degree angle on your roof to allow to facilitate that movement of smoke up and out into a pinched exit point. That's the key right here. 
if anything, there's anything I can tell you guys, this is the key to the design. You gotta pinch the smoke on the way out. Okay guys, so I just wrapped up putting the uh, the cold smoker together and I just wanted to show you guys, I've ran it a few times now, done a couple test runs and I want to show you guys what we've actually accomplished. And uh, let me tell you, it took a long time but uh, we finally got it done. So here she is. All right, there it is. You can see I built a steel base out of inch and a half tubing on the bottom, square tubing, a couple casters so I can move it around. We've got the uh, vent on the top, which is allowing the smoke to come out. Those are slide vents from a barbecue supply store. I actually uh, purchased those and painted them black. Uh, they're just uh, steel and then I added the the mesh in there to make sure that no birds or mice or rats or whatever could potentially get in. You can see here this was actually the most expensive piece of the whole build and that's just a cedar siding uh, roof uh, that I that I used. The balance of the construction is two by four and plywood. And let me tell you, within two weeks of putting the plywood up, I regretted it, but it was too late. I know it's kind of hard to see, but I caulked these corners here so they were sealed with clear silicone. The base, like you can see here, is removable. So if I want to remove the actual house off the base to fit it in my garage, I can do that. Uh, the reason I'm regretting the plywood, you can see here it's already bubbled up. We had a couple days of rain. I was kind of hoping that the the uh, stain that I put on here would, would act as enough of a uh, moisture barrier, but it didn't. And so the plywood immediately swelled up. And now this is crap. I'm going to have to redo these doors at some point. Uh, you can see here... I tied in the uh, little firebox with a four foot piece of aluminum duct and a single elbow going up and into um, the cold smoker. And I used a piece of cement uh, hardy board just in case um, it ever got too hot or there was some, some uh, sparks or something that came up. I figured that the uh, hardy board was probably the best thing to put in there. And then over here on the actual firebox, you could see that little box. That's a piece of a, a aluminum dryer vent box, which I then bolted into the firebox to allow condensation to drip in there. And essentially, it's just a, a really clean way of connecting that firebox to the uh, to the duct, um, the cooling duct, to get it up and into the smokehouse. Now, something that I added this time which I've never used before, but I got a lot of uh, comments about it from my old smokehouse, was this filter filled with uh, river rock. You can see here, this is about a bag of river rock from Home Depot. And the reason I put this in there is for the uh, smoke to get filtered through. You catch some of the carcinogens in the tar so it doesn't end up on your meat. Now, 
I also added a little bit of angle here, pretty wide angle. It's about an inch and a half, two inch angle, uh, which is good because I would always have the problem before where if these sticks were, you know, if I hit them, they would they would fall off. And so this allows them to, to catch and sit in place. I also put this uh, thermometer slash uh, humidity gauge uh, hygrometer up here. You can see that. I don't think it's going to last, I'll be honest with you. I think the smoke over time is going to really kind of destroy it, but they're cheap. I could buy a new one. And you can see there's the mesh. And I put one filter on one side. I'm sorry, not filter, vent, and one on the other. So they're kind of one's in the front, one's in the back. And just tacked up a little bit of mesh to make sure that that's going to work. Plywood construction again, not happy, but the quality of the lumber either due to COVID or shipping issues, I don't know, but the quality of the lumber was so bad. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. And uh, so I, I had to use plywood just to make sure that this thing was gonna work. Put a lock on it just in case, never hurts. Um, I'll use that when I get, fill it up with meat. Um, and then this is a smoke box that I got out of the big box store. Um, and I just did a couple little modifications to it. I've been running it on really high temperatures just to burn off some of the paint. You can see there, there was a little bit of condensation already and it rusted. And the first time I ran this thing, the paint started flaking off immediately. So, you know, there's going to be some maintenance that I'm going to have to do on this over time. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, this actually slides out. So you can clean it out. You can see there's water in here. Uh, that is the kiss of death for sheet metal. The ash that, that accumulates on the bottom there is very caustic. And if you put water to it, it's going to rust and it's going to um, eat through that. So you absolutely have to keep it dry or keep it indoors when you're not using it. Uh, you can see here there's a, a little grate that it comes with and I put these three fire brick on here to allow for number one uh, heat retention but then number two it gives it a better platform to burn off of so that's something a little bit different and I got to tell you guys I only dampered this end here everything else is pretty much open you can see the damper here and when I ran it the first time it makes excessive amounts of smoke with the damper about an eighth of an inch open. So, you know, you could almost, almost shut this thing down completely because you could see here, this just simply is not a sealed, uh, high quality uh, uh, smoke box. It's, you know, it's got a lot of gaps and it's not, uh, it's not as tight of a seal as, as I'd like. And then of course you've got little areas in the ductwork here and everywhere else that oxygen is coming in so to really control that smoke it's it's very difficult um, I took that damper off completely and then tied in that box the aluminum box which is actually a dryer extension box also made out of aluminum and that hopefully will allow the condensation to accumulate in there um, and then just drip down to the ground and you could see a nice four foot piece of uh, sheet metal there. The uh, four foot duct, which doesn't allow any condensation to, to drip on the concrete. And it gives that smoke plenty of time, plenty of time to cool. So there it is, a whole lot different than the previous smokehouse that I had made. And hopefully the goal is that this thing's gonna last me 10 to 15 years and I won't have to do too much maintenance to it. Probably a yearly uh, light sanding and uh, a coat of stain. And hopefully that's about it. The metal base, occasionally I'm sure I'm gonna have to touch up the paint. The uh, smoke box is gonna have to have some maintenance on it rather quickly actually. Um, I may even drill a hole in the bottom of it just to allow the rain to, uh, to escape just to be on the safe side. But overall, uh, pretty happy with the oops, pretty happy with the final construction here. Um, and we'll talk cost here in a little bit, but 
a lot more than I had expected and uh, than I had hoped for. But, you know, it's uh, kind of a weird time right now and materials through the roof. So, not too surprised about that. There we go. Okay. So there we go, guys. That's the uh, the final, and I'm going to go ahead and get it loaded and get it fired up and show you guys how it works. Okay, guys, here it is in action. So the smoker is burning now. It's been on for, I would say, probably about uh, 25, 30 minutes. And I wanted to show you guys, this to me is really... Uh, kind of the most important factor here. So the white probe is the outside temperature. It's currently at 30 degrees. The purple probe is laying um, in between the pork loins and the green probe is laying right on top of the filter. So the filter is 113 degrees in between the loins, which I'll show you here in a second is running 45 degrees and the outdoor temperature is 31. So the temperature differential from the outside to the uh, inside is about 15 degrees. And quite honestly, uh, I don't know, I'd say about 30, 40 minutes ago, the outdoor temperature was in the high 30s. So it, it got really cold here in the last few minutes. Um, but it's working and that's the key, right? So we have the the full length of aluminum duct which allows it time to travel time to cool it's coming in hitting the filter at about 115 degrees and then it's coming out the top here probably 40 degrees you know in between the loins it's 45 and here it's making its way out at uh, probably closer to 40 so let's take a look inside and see what this thing looks like filled with all sorts of goodies all right Oop. and there go all the yep that's great we got to work on that but more importantly here we go let some of the smoke bellow out I've got two pork bellies in there and 14 pork loins you could see plenty of room in between here maybe if I turn on some light plenty of room in between nothing is crowded there's plenty of space I could probably quite honestly if I wanted to fit another six maybe eight uh, loins in there you can see the filter is doing its thing. It's distributing the smoke nice and even, and you could already see the the staining on some of the uh, the rocks. They're almost uh, like I would say condensing to a degree, uh, but that's exactly what it's supposed to do, and everything is working perfectly. So, good deal, guys. Uh, remember, take the time, build it right and uh, follow the steps that we talked about at the beginning of the video and you should have a nice long lasting uh, cold smoker that you could do all sorts of good stuff with